हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द चैनल इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी विल कवर ऑल अबाउट द ड्रॉट सो इफ यू डोंट वॉच दैट वीडियो फर्स्ट गो थ्रू इट आई विल गिव योर आई विल गिव लिंक इन द आई बटन और डिस्क्रिप्शन एज वेल नाउ इन द टुडेज लेक्चर वी विल कवर ऑल अबाउट द साइक्लोन्स सो uh what is cyclone as you know cyclone is a, you can say cyclone as a tropical cyclone okay is uh, also known as cyclone <clears throat> and it is the term it is uh, globally used to cover the tropical weather system okay uh in the tropical in the tropical cyclone the wind is a uh, flow equal or exceed the gale force gale force means minimum force or uh, minimum of 34 knot uh in india there will be 62 km per hour speed okay this is called the cyclone <clears throat> as you can see in the picture okay uh so cyclone is cyclone is intense low pressure area of the earth most coupled system and uh, are extreme weather event of a tropics a tropical cyclone is storm system characterized by the uh, large low pressure air centers and numerous thunderstorms that produces strong wind and flooding rain tropical cyclone uh, uh, feed on the heat release when the most uh, air rises <clears throat> and resulting a condensation of water uh, water vapor contain in the more moist air in the term tropical refers to the both the geographic origin of this system which form almost exclusively in tropical regions of the globe and their formation in maritime tropical air masses and the term cyclone refers to such a storm cyclonic natural with the counter clockwise rotation in another another uh, hemisphere and clockwise rotation in a southern hemisphere okay. so depending on its location and strength a tropical cyclone is called uh, by many other names such as you can see on the screen hurricane typhoon tropical storm okay cyclonic storm tropical depression and simply cyclone which tropical cyclone can produce extremely powerful wind and territorial rain they are also able to produce high waves and damaging storm surges they develop over the large bodies of warm water and lose their strength if they move over land so this is the reason for coastal region receiving a significant damage from a tropical cyclone if someone ask you what is the main reason uh, for large body uh, large bodies of uh, sorry large loose large damage in the uh, coastal areas so this is the uh, as i can say earlier uh, that is the main reason okay now heavy rains however can produce significant flooding island inland sorry not island it's inland and storm surges can produce extensive coastal flooding up to 40 kilometers from the coastal line although their effect on a human population can be devastating and tropical cyclone can be relieve drought condition as well they also carry the heat and energy away from the tropics and transport it towards the temperate latitude which make them an important part of a global atmospheric circulation mechanism so as a result tropical cyclone can help to maintain equilibrium in the earth troposphere and to maintain relatively stable and warm temperature worldwide but it is disastrous okay it is a very uh, you can say the most dangerous hazard we have faced Okay. now a strong typical cyclone is usually harbors an area sinking air at the center of the circulation so uh, this is called the eye of a cyclone uh, a strong again i can ask you a strong tropical cyclone usually harbors an area of sinking air at the center of the circulation this area is called eye of an cyclone weather in the eye 
is normally calm and uh, free of clouds although c may uh, c may have extremely violent and the eye is normally circular in shape and may vary uh, in the size of from a uh, 3 kilometer up to 370 kilometer okay diameter surrounding the eye is a region called center dense overcast means cdo surrounding the eye is the region called the center dense overcast cdo a concentrated area of strong thunderstorm activity curved band of cloud and thunderstorm trail away from a eye in a spiral fashion okay. uh, the these bands are capable of producing heavy burst of rain and wind as well as the tornadoes if one were to travel between outer edges of the hurricane to its center one would normally progress from light rain and wind to dry and weak breeze then back into increasingly heavy rainfall and stronger wind over and over again which uh, with each period of rainfall and wind being more intense and lasting longer okay so <clears throat> this is the theory of cyclone in which in theory we can learn how to cyclone is produced and uh, what is uh, what it is called in another hemisphere or what is it called in a uh, western hemisphere and what are the types uh, what is called the i and uh, what is called the cdo okay now another part is classification so what is the classification the criteria followed by the meteorological department of india imd to classify the low pressure system in the bay of bengal and the uh, in arabian sea as adopted by world meteorological organization wmo are as under so here <clears throat> this is the classification of tropical cyclones there are uh, in the uh, first row uh, in the first column there will be type of disturbances and the second column is associated with wind speed in the circulation okay if low pressure area then uh, the wind speed is less than 31 km per hour as uh, another in another word you can say less than the 17 knot okay so this is the uh, you can say classification of cyclones now uh, what are the destruction caused by the cyclones so there are three elements okay there are three elements associated with cyclones which causes destruction during its occurrence and desires first one is strong wind or we can say squall okay so cyclone what is strong wind and squall so cyclones are known to cause severe damage to infrastructure through the high speed wind that is strong wind which accompany a cyclonic storm damages installation dwelling communication system trees etc etc which are resulting in a loss of life and property as well gusts uh, sorry gusts are short but a rapid burst in the wind speed are the main cause for the damage squalls on the other hand are longer period of increased wind speed and generally associated with the bands of thunderstorm that make up the spiral uh, bands around the cyclones so strong wind and squall now the second one is second element is torrential rains and inland flooding so what is torrential or we can say torrential torrential rainfall means more than 30 cm per hour speed uh, rain associated with cyclone is another major cause of damages unabated rains gives rise of unpredicted flood okay. rain water on the top of this storm surge may add to the fury of the storm rain is serious problem for the people which become shelterless due to cyclone heavy rainfall from the cyclone is usually spread over a wide area and cause large scale of soil erosion and weakening of embankments okay, so this is all about it torrential rains and inland flooding uh, now the third element is storm surge a storm surge storm surge can be defined as the 
abnormal rise of sea level near the coast causes by the severe tropical cyclone as a, as a result of which sea water uh, low lying under the coastal region drawing the human being and livestock okay, and cause eroding beaches and uh, embankment destroy vegetation and leads to reduction of soil fertility okay. so this is see all about the storm surge now uh as you as i told earlier as i told here there will be destruction is caused by the cyclone so there will be a cyclone warning system as you i as we can use in our region so what is a cyclone warning system in india okay so the india meteorological department okay imd is responsible for providing tropical cyclone warning in india the tropical cyclone warning service is one of the most important function of the india meteorological department and it was first service undertaken by the department which is more than 135 year old okay so what is the org uh, which organization tropical cyclone warning in india are provided through the three areas cyclone warning center okay which are the uh, which are this area first one first one is located at kolkata second one is located at chennai third one is located at mumbai okay and the three cyclonic warning centers at the bhuneshwar visakhapatnam and amdavad the uh, this entire cyclonic warning work is coordinated by the deputy general of meteorology at the pune and the deputy director general of meteorology services at the new delhi okay so how can we uh, tracking this tropical cyclone so tracking of this tropping uh, tropical cyclone in india is done by the uh, with some help okay first one help is conventional surface and upper air observation from inland and island stations coastal automatic weather system aws ships and buoy observation second one is cyclone detection radar including doppler weather radar and the third one is satellite cloud picture from the geostationary satellite we have a two geostationary satellite insat 3a and kalpana 1 okay now <clears throat> uh we have to track the tropical cyclones and we have to do uh, we have to uh, give warnings about the cyclones so the bulletins and the warning issued in the connection with tropical cyclone in india and it is divided into the broad categories like warning bulletin for shipping the high seas warning bulletin for the ships playing uh, in the coastal uh, coastal water okay there will be uh, another warning is port warning another is fishing war fisheries warning next one is port stage warning for the state and central government officials another is warning for recipient who are registered with the department okay another is aviation and uh, warning for the general public through the all india radio doordarshan and the press another warning is for the indian navy and the last one is bulletin for a print or uh, we can say the electronic media so these are the uh, tropical cyclone warnings which is divided into this categories as you can see on the screen now what are the safety tip so uh, at the end of the our lecture we always discuss about the safety tips uh, what to do and what not to do before and during the disaster and after the disaster so here as well we can uh, discuss about what to do and what not to do before and during the disaster and after the disaster so first one is before and during what to do and what not to do so the first point in this topic is listen to radio or weather reports 
and alert everyone through the loudspeaker or by going home to home. Okay. Second point is identify safe shelter in your areas. This should be cyclone resistance and also find the closest route to reach them. Third point is keep your emergency kit and basic food supply, medicine, torch, and batteries, etc. ready. Okay. And the next one is door, windows, roof, and wall should be strengthened before the cyclone season through the retrofitting and repairing. Store adequate food grains and water in the safe places. Another thing, another point which uh, you must have to uh, learn is conduct mock drills for your family and the community. Another next point is do not venture into the sea. Stay indoors under the strong part, strongest part of the house if not moved by the cyclone center. If you do not move to the cyclone center. Okay. And the last point is remain indoor until advised that cyclone has passed away. So these are the points which you have to do and do not before and during the disaster. But what to do after the disaster? First point is do not go out till officially advised that is safe. If evacuated, wait till advised to go back. Second point is use the recommended route to return to your house and do not rush. And the last point is be careful of broken power lines, damaged road and house and fallen trees etc. So these are the main three points which you have to consider after the disaster has been occurred. Okay. So this is all about the cyclones. Okay. Now in the next lecture uh, we will learn about the avalanches. All about the avalanches. Okay. This avalanches is also covered in the hydrometeorological disaster. Okay. Till then, Jai Hind.